Here's a clip from this Channel 4 interview that went viral earlier this year. Why should your right to freedom of speech trump a trans person's right not to be offended? Because in order to be able to think, you have to risk being offensive. I mean, look at the conversation we're having right now. You know, like you're certainly willing to risk offending me in the pursuit of truth. Why should you have the right to do that? It's been rather uncomfortable. Please welcome Jordan Peterson. Professor. Hey, great pleasure to meet you. I'm a big fan, as you might have, fact, as you might have guessed, and I love what you just said, that in order to be able to think, you have to risk being offensive. And that went viral. That made you very famous. Why do you think that sparked such a reaction? Well, because I think that what I was saying was self-evidently true, but not expressed very well very often. I mean, look, most of the time when you're discussing something that needs to be discussed, everybody's actually rather upset about it. You know, if you're actually talking right. about something sure. important, right? Because why talk otherwise, unless you're just shooting the breeze? But if there's an issue at hand that has to be discussed, then people are already upset, and they have different viewpoints, and and the, the, the offensiveness, in some sense, is built into that. And you know that, because if you have a family, if you have a wife, if, if you have an intimate relationship, and you're discussing something that's difficult, the probability that you're not going to offend each other if you're actually having the conversation is zero. And so... To, you don't have to think unless you have a problem. And if you have a problem, then when you think, you're going to offend people. And so, so what, are we not going to think? That seems like a bad idea. Not, uh, yeah. You're uh, obviously which is not a, an a system of male dominance in society. Yeah, that's not my sense of the what's yours? Well, but, in what sense know, is do our society male-dominated? Yeah. Uh, the fact that the vast majority of wealth is owned by men, the vast majority of capital and is owned by men. Women do more unpaid it's a very, labor. Very tiny proportion of men, and a huge proportion of people who are seriously disaffected are men. Most people in prison are men. Most people who are uh, on the street are men. Most victims of violent crime are men. Most people who commit suicide are men. Uh, most men, most people who die in wars are men. People who do worse in school are men. It's like. Where's the dominance here, precisely? What you're doing is you're taking a tiny substrata of hyper-successful men and using that to represent the entire structure of, the, of Western society. There's nothing about that that's vaguely appropriate. But I could say equally well that most rape victims are women. You know, terrible things happen to people of both sexes. And you could say that with, with, with perfect utility, but that doesn't provide any evidence for the existence of a male-dominated patriarchy. Well, there it are... just means that terrible things happen to both genders, which they certainly do. But there are almost no women who rape men, for example. So that is an asymmetry there in sexual violence. Well, yes, there's an, asy there's an asymmetry in all sorts of places, but that doesn't mean that Western culture is a male-dominated patriarchy. So the the fact that there are asymmetries has nothing to do week. with your basic argument. Just serve time no, but you might this, is, this is a trope that people just currency. accept. Western it's society is a male-dominated patriarchy. It's like, no, it's not. That's not true. And, and even, if it, even if it has a patriarchal structure, to some degree, the, uh, the fundamental basis of that structure is not power. It's competence. That's why our society works. It's only when a, when a structure degenerates into tyranny that the fundamental relationships between people become dependent on power. It's not power. If you hire a plumber who's likely to be male, it's not because there's roving bands of tyrannical plumbers forcing you to make that choice. And it's the case with almost every interaction that you have at the face of our culture. We're dealing with people who are offering a service of one Morning. form or another, well, who are usually the parts of the broad middle class, adult contact, and who offer, and what you're looking for is the person who can offer the best service, and you can find it. It's not a consequence well, of being dominated by anything that's network presents and, and then again, a culture, savage nation. Western culture, um, which is, is by no means uncut, and certainly has tyrannical and elements like all raw. cultures do, all is the least tyrannical society ever been and here he is, New York story. Times best-selling author and National Radio Hall of Fame inductee, Michael Savage. Well, today's podcast basically is my day on the bay, on my boat, on my birthday. I gave a birthday talk, which you're going to love, and prior to that, you know, Savage Unvarnished, Savage Unleashed. It's just me talking to you, which you love. 
And as a natural broadcaster, I want to now give you the stories of the day, the news views and reviews you come to expect. And I think these are the top stories. I um, hate to pick on the Pope, but it's very hard to ignore what this man is doing. He lives behind 80-foot stone walls in the Vatican. And so I was what is your definition of political correctness? And I, would, I had to come up with one. I said it's the elevation of sensitivity over truth, mm -hmm. which seems like what it still is, except it's worse than ever. It's more, like the, it's more like the elevation of moral posturing about sensitivity over truth. It's even worse. Yeah. So where did it come from? Why did we get, how did we get to this place where we're so fragile, the safe space people? Oh, I think, I think that you can pretty much blame it on the universities. I think that they've pursued, uh, especially in the humanities and, and in the social sciences as well, they've pursued a policy of a radical leftist policy with, with an overlay of, of postmodernism, which kind of a literary criticism uh, approach that's produced all of this, as far as I can tell. I think you could lay a lot of it at the feet of faculties like the faculties of education. There was a, an article in the, in the Chronicle of Higher Education this week just, that would just, just devastated the faculties of education, taking them to task we for all live in standards and for possession by ideology and for, and, for, and for basically indoctrinating people in a cult-like manner and playing identity politics and group identity. And, and no free speech. They, yeah, they don't well, seem to pr there, there was an incident in Fresno State. I don't know if you saw this, but Barbara Bush died. Okay, some professor there tweeted something nasty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't have tweeted it. it. She called Barbara Bush a racist and said she raised war criminals. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, it's, it's... Yeah, well, the timing. This crowd likes it, yeah. but, but it, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's nasty. How can doctors and, and, and patients uh, build through stronger relationships? How do we bring said. everyone together said, so that healthcare finally works for all of us? Yeah, and that's what I was saying. Have we... Yeah, have we lost the healthcare thread? Right? Back to the beginning. No one what free speech is? Yes, it can be disrespectful. That is covered under free speech. President of Fresno, you idiot. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Well, and again, see, keeping out, this too. I, I well, everybody, words, manifesting I stand on it. I learn why banks, the, listen to me, banks are now required to spy on you, and I, for the government, the our government, and then they report any financial... But, but comedians I'm one of them. Yeah, well, exactly, exactly. Yeah, fuck them. I'm not, I mean, I'm not going to... I, 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 I call these people emotional hemophilia.